let's take a minute to address issues that all of us are concerned about right now. All of us that are, you know, we're all consumers. Gas and oil, oh my gosh. Energy, everything is going up. I mean, it's just crazy. Food costs, listen, <laughs> trying to find a turkey this year for Thanksgiving was a problem. Supply chain issues, we almost could not find a turkey. Sure. How does that happen? But it does. It has been. Well, yeah, we, we have gone from an era of, you know, lots of, lots of supply, no shortages, to where shortages uh, do crop up, prices go, you know, almost like a, a meme stock for a while. And, you know, if you think it's bad here, look at what happened to energy costs in Europe. In fact, I saw in the New York Times that the 61% of Scottish citizens this winter were likely to be in energy poverty because their power costs have gone up so astronomically. In the UK, roughly 30% of their power comes from wind, and the wind hasn't been blowing. And yet it's been cold, and kind of intermittently cold, warm and cold, but cold enough that there's been, uh, again, a, a, just a crunch for uh, these poor people and their power costs. And, and that's, you know, it's, it, to be fair, it's, uh, there has been a decline in energy costs in recent months. You know, the price of oil fell from $120 a barrel down to 70 and that's why you're seeing a lot of relief at the gas pump. But I don't think that's going to persist. I think we're going to see another spike in energy prices this year. You, know, you were talking about policy decisions and some of these games that are played, and as you, I think you're aware, the Biden administration was releasing uh, – some. they have released more oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve than has ever been released, and now it's at the lowest yeah. level – in history, yep. at least since it was formed, and, and particularly relative to the amount of oil that's consumed per day, which has gone up drastically over the last 30 years. So now they have to go in and refill it, and they're, they're trying to, to refill it at $70 a barrel or less, but oil prices are back now closer to 80. I'm afraid they're going to miss their opportunity to get it back cheap. I mean, they really could kind of pull off a coup because they're, I think their average sale price is something like $97 a barrel. But if they're too, you know, too clever for their own good and try to bottom tick the price of oil, I'm afraid they're going to be paying above $100 at some point this year. So I guess what I'm saying is that if you if you agree with what I'm saying, you can invest in things that are scarce. And ironically, there has been a fairly significant correction in a lot of these things that do have uh, real supply challenges. You know, whether it's oil or natural gas or uranium or copper. You know, with this huge move to electric vehicles, the amount of copper that's going to be consumed is going to go up, you know, exponentially. There's there's like three times as much copper that goes into an electric vehicle as a traditional car. So it's and there's just not that much copper that's being found. And pretty much all these scarce commodities and resources, there has been chronic underinvestment for years. It's really tough to develop a new copper mine, for example even though no copper is essential for the great green energy right. transition, as I call it. So one of my themes, Denise, has been greenflation, that by trying to go green so quickly, uh, I think way too quickly, you know, we're going to create a lot of price inflation by, uh, you know, for example, discouraging investment in oil and natural gas. So when you discourage investment, you get shortages. 